Chairwoman, holding this hearing, um, one of the things that I think has been touched on a little bit is the impact of the lockdowns on uh, school children. Uh, but I haven't heard anyone talk about this, Dr. McBride, the surge in teen suicides. Um, I mean, we've seen a record number of, of teen suicides. It got so bad in Las Vegas that it forced the Las Vegas schools to reopen. Um, I know that uh, the uh, medical community has been overwhelmed with, with the treating COVID patients, but to, added to that are the um, complications of, of being locked out of jobs, being locked out of schools, uh, being cut off uh, socially from peers and friends. Uh, hasn't that added to, to your workload? To Dr. McBride, yes, thank you. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's important to recognize that ER visits for mental health concerns, suicide rates, cannot possibly measure the breadth and depth of people's despair as defined by having depression, anxiety, OCD, PTSD, substance use disorder. I would also say to make it clear that there are many, many roots of people's underlying health conditions in, in the mental health sphere. In other words, people have lost loved ones to COVID-19. Mm -hmm. That's a trauma. People have also lost a sense of normalcy in their fourth grade classroom. That's also a loss. So I think that the roots of the mental health crisis are, are broad and varied. But I think but, it's not but, a coincidence that me, the surge in general... Let me right, ask for a little clarification here because... When you start talking about how broad it is, that implies that there are underlying conditions that may have been made worse by the lockdowns. But that's true of physical health as well. Sure. So the, the bottom line is here, and, and I'm, I'm looking at this Johns Hopkins. It's not a report. It's, it's, uh, uh, an, it's uh, an assessment of, of existing research. And I just want to read uh, what it said that... Uh, that the lockdowns during the initial phase of COVID-19 pandemic have had devastating effects. They have contributed to reducing economic activity, raising unemployment, reducing schooling, causing political unrest, contributing to domestic violence, undermining liberal democracy. These costs to society must be compared to the benefits of lockdowns, which our meta-analysis has shown are marginal at best. And then it concludes with this. Such a standard benefit cost calculation leads to a strong conclusion. Lockdown should be rejected out of hand as, as pandemic policy instrument. And the thing that bothers me about this is, is that we knew this before this report came out. And as a consequence, I, I mean, there's all kind of research out there and studies that showed that we had this surge in teen suicide, particularly among women. We had teachers quitting. We now, you talk about a shortage of healthcare workers, we now have a shortage of teachers. And, and a lot of it has to do with the lockdowns. Dr. McBride. So I think, I think you're absolutely right that lockdowns have done enormous harm on our social fabric, on our economy, on our physical health. Um, and I think it's not a coincidence that the Surgeon General has issued a concerning report about pediatric and teen mental health. And we know that the AAP, the American Association of Pediatrics, the American Association of Child and Adolescent Psychiatrists, and the Children's Hospital Association issued a very concerning report in October saying that kids are at high risk and are experiencing unprecedented levels of anxiety and depression. So it's not a coincidence. Um, and I think that moving forward, we need to be better at recognizing that health is about more than the absence of COVID-19 and that people face myriad threats to their health and well-being from depression, diabetes, obesity, substance use disorder, and highly contagious respiratory viruses. That is our job in healthcare, is to think broadly about health. My, one of my biggest concerns about this, aside from all of the other things that we've just discussed, is this massive loss of public confidence in medicine, in science, and in the political leadership of this country. We have to get back to science, we have to get back to medicine, and we've got to figure out a way to restore the public's confidence in those who make these type decisions, that they cannot be political. Uh, with that, uh, Madam Chairman, I yield back.